Hope you are doing well. I am coming to you from Limassol, Cyprus, from the Poseidon Gardens here in Limassol on a hot summer day, plus 40, 42 degrees Celsius. It is hot. Thank God for my Duran hat. Navy blue, USA flag right in the middle. 10% off. Use the code Real News, Guys, let's talk about the NSA and Tucker Carlson. First, our meme of the day, and it is a Lego set, a capital, a, a January 6th. January 6th, I have to be careful what I say here. January 6th Lego set, because you guys know that uh, they're arresting people who had, from what I understand, had uh, capital Lego sets, which is really, really bizarre. People who were at the, at the events on January 6th, if they had a capital Lego set, they're arresting them. Very strange story, but anyway, the meme of the day is this Lego set. It is, oh my God, it's, it's fantastic. This is a funny meme of the day. Anyway, guys, we need to talk about Tucker Carlson and let me pull up the story real quick. And um, we now know that, uh, yes, the NSA was spying on Tucker Carlson. Yes, they did leak Tucker Carlson's uh, communication to a Washington mainstream media outlet. We know that as well. And what did they leak to that mainstream media outlet? They leaked information that Tucker was, uh, the Tucker Carlson Tonight Show was trying to score an interview with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Why not? It is newsworthy. It's absolutely newsworthy. He's, uh, he's a journalist, Fox News, news outlet. Why wouldn't you want to have an interview with the Russian president? He is, of course, making news and um, completely on the up and up. Now, Tucker Carlson didn't want to say anything about this because he didn't want to freak out the, uh, the Kremlin. He didn't want to stir up any type of, uh, of chatter before he secured the interview. So he kept it on the down low. Now, only Tucker and his staff knew about the communications they were having with the Kremlin to score an interview. Most likely, the Kremlin's uh, press office, Dmitry uh, Peskov. These are the people that they were probably talking to. And um, pretty normal, I guess. I mean, you're going to interview the, the leader of a, a head of state. You know, you're going to, you're going to want to communicate with his uh, communication secretary and try to, to secure it. But uh, this didn't go over well with the NSA. And so they were uh, spying on uh, the Tucker Carlson Tonight Show. And then they leaked it to the Washington mainstream media. And the reason they leaked it is because they wanted to smear Tucker Carlson as what? What did they want to smear Tucker Carlson as? You guessed it, a Putin puppet. That is exactly what they wanted to smear Tucker Carlson as, as a Putin puppet. And so that was their plan. But uh, luckily, a whistleblower came through and uh, he foiled those plans. And so you have the story that you have now. And Tucker is going on the offensive, guys. He's not letting up. I'm going to play for you a video clip. It's about five minutes long. I'm also going to put a link down in the description box down below, which um, is an interview between Tucker Carlson and Glenn Greenwald, where they go into some more detail as to the illegality of what the NSA did and how no one is going to hold the NSA and the U.S. surveillance state accountable. But in the video clip I'm going to play for you, Tucker Carlson breaks it all down. It's five minutes long. I'll put a link down below to the original, but I'm going to probably speed it up just a little bit just to make sure that uh, I don't have any copyright issues. But I'll, I'll make the sound so that it's good and you guys can, uh, can get everything that Tucker's saying. And I'll play that for you in just a couple of minutes. But first, I just want to say one thing about all of this, and that is that the... Um, Man, the NSA and the surveillance state. Hey, cat. cat here. All right. He got a little scared, so I'll move back a little. I didn't see him. I didn't see him sitting there in the sun. <laughs> anyway, guys. So you know, the whole thing is that the um, the surveillance state is just getting out of control. I mean, it is getting out of freaking control. And uh, if we don't watch out soon. If citizens of the United States don't watch out soon, you know, it's only a matter of time before before you end up with some sort of KGB type scenario in the US if you don't have that already. It's, it's already, it's moving towards that situation, guys. 
and uh, the U.S. is just one step away from uh, from losing complete control and complete uh, power is going to go straight to the surveillance states. A couple of interesting things that uh, that are mentioned during the Glenn Greenwald interview: it's that Washington is scared to death, scared to death of the surveillance state. That was an interesting uh, exchange between Tucker Carlson and Glenn Greenwald. Remember, I'll put the link down below. Also, Tucker Carlson mentions the fact that uh, he lives a pretty normal life. He says, like, four kids, two dogs, been married for 30 years. He says, God, I can't imagine if, uh, if I was living an unconventional type of lifestyle, how worried he would be with the surveillance state and what they would have on him. That was an interesting hint. Actually, I think he said that when he was speaking with Mark Stein. I'll try to find the link to that as well and put that down below. That was a fascinating revelation from Tucker Carlson. He's basically saying that all the, all the freaky things that the people do in D.C., the surveillance state knows all about it. And they, uh, and well, they use it. And they use it to keep Washington in line. And also Glenn Greenwald mentioned the uh, Chuck Schumer, Rachel Maddow interview during uh, the Trump presidency. And he mentioned how uh, Rachel Maddow is pretty much just uh, just a tool of the surveillance state and the six ways till till Sunday thing. I always get that quote wrong. But anyway, the fact of the matter is, is that Glenn Greenwald was saying that everyone in, in D.C. is just scared crapless of the surveillance state. Basically, I'm getting the hint, guys, the impression that uh, if we're not there already, we're not far off from uh, the United States being run by the, the surveillance agencies. They They have big tech. I'm now convinced that... They completely control all the big tech. I don't think, uh, I think Zuckerberg and Zuckbot and Dorsey, they're just kind of, they're just kind of carrying out orders. Um, no doubt they have DC completely spooked and, uh, you know, Tucker Carlson is, is, is exposing that. Here's the video guys from the Tucker Carlson Tonight Show. I'll put a timestamp in case someone wants to just, uh, just skip over all of this stuff and uh, go straight to the video. I'll put that down there, description box down below. Anyway, guys, take care. The Biden administration's largest intelligence gathering agency, the NSA, had been reading my private emails. Even saying that out loud is weird. It's one of those segments we never thought we would do ever, but the country has changed that much that fast. And honestly, the whole thing was kind of shocking. The government was spying on us? Come on, it seemed crazy, but it's true. And no one in Washington appeared to be shocked in the slightest. In fact, the usual shills right after our segment had a ready explanation for it. Either it never happened at all, they said, just a cable news show lying for ratings, or there must have been a good reason it happened. And they began furiously making excuses for why the NSA did it. A powerful, heavily politicized spy agency surveilling journalists who've been critical of the regime? No problem. It's perfectly normal. Just don't call it spying. But it's not normal at all. It is third world. And as we told you repeatedly, it did happen. Now that has been confirmed. Yesterday, we learned that sources in the so-called intelligence community told at least one reporter in Washington what was in those emails, my emails. There was nothing scandalous in there, thank God. We're happy to report that. Late this spring, I contacted a couple of people I thought could help get us an interview with Russian President Vladimir Putin. I told nobody I was doing this other than my executive producer, Justin Wells. I wasn't embarrassed about trying to interview Putin. He's obviously newsworthy. I'm an American citizen. I can interview anyone I want, and I plan to. But still, in this case, I decided to keep it quiet. I figured that any kind of publicity would rattle the Russians and make the interview less likely to happen. But the Biden administration found out anyway by reading my emails. I learned from a whistleblower that the NSA planned to leak the contents of those emails to media outlets. Why would they do that? Well, the point, of course, was to paint me as a disloyal American, a Russian operative, been called that before, a stooge of the Kremlin, a traitor doing the bidding of a foreign adversary. And of course, I'm the, hardly the only person who's been accused of those things in the last several years. We've seen this movie several times now. At the same moment the communist Chinese government increases its already stunning level of control over this country, our leaders prattle on about the threat of Vladimir Putin. He's an evildoer, they tell us, a totalitarian dictator. Vladimir Putin does things that no American leader would even consider. He runs domestic disinformation campaigns. He lies to the public. He punishes people for opposing him or for believing the wrong things. He even uses intelligence agencies to spy on his own citizens. Beyond the pale stuff. So no decent American would interview Vladimir Putin, at least no reporter from Fox News. That was the point they wanted to make. That's why they planned to leak the contents of my emails to news organizations. And yesterday, as noted, we learned they actually did it. Even now, some of the media are claiming that we deserve this. Emailing with people who know Putin, are you? Of course the NSA is watching you. That's what you get. But that's hardly the point. By law, the NSA is required to keep secret the identities of American citizens who've been caught up in its vast domestic spying operations. 
So by law, I should have been identified internally merely as a U.S. journalist or American journalist. That's the law. But that's not how I was identified. I was identified by name. I was unmasked. People in the building learned who I was. And then my name and the contents of my emails left that building at the NSA and wound up with a news organization in Washington. That is illegal. In fact, it is precisely what this law was designed to prevent in the first place. We cannot have intelligence agencies used as instruments of political control. Both parties used to agree on that. Democrats were especially adamant on the point, but not anymore. So that's exactly what is happening here. We need to find out how this happened. Who did it? Who allowed it? Paul Nakasone would know the answer. Paul Nakasone is the highly political director of the NSA. Paul Nakasone would have been required personally to approve my unmasking. That's how it works. Paul Nakasone should explain who asked for that unmasking, and he should do it immediately. Avril Haynes would also likely know the answer. Haynes is the even more political director of, the, of national intelligence. She oversees all of it. She may have approved the unmasking as well. She would certainly know who asked for it and who approved it. That's her job to know. She should release that information immediately, tonight. And if Avril Haynes does not release that information, she should be forced to release that information. We don't have a lot of power as a TV show, but we're going to keep pushing for that because it matters, not just to us, but to the entire country. You can't have a democracy in a place where unaccountable spy agencies keep people in line by leaking the contents of their emails, discrediting them with their own emails, which they thought were private. You can't, it doesn't work if you allow that. And we suspect congressional Republicans will also demand an answer. Many have finally awakened to the fact that the intelligence agencies, which they have blindly supported for so long, are not in fact their friends. They're not the friends of anyone in this country. They're dangerous. That's obvious. 